We can go through the icebreaker, explain the team, like what the goals are for payloads, what the members will be doing, uh, what our year's gonna look like a little bit, go over the rules, specifically like the payload part. Hello everyone who has just come in. Uh, thank you guys for coming. We have our attendance code up here. We really push on education and competition. So educate and compete is our motto. Like making sure that you are learning what you wanna learn from DBF. So whatever skills you wanna gain, things like that, we wanna make sure we're helping you and get what you wanna get out of DBF. So that means Really make sure you're helping others. Um, ask for help, ask questions if you have anything. We really all are here to help you and help you learn. So just make sure to communicate what you need, what you wanna learn with your lead, with all of us, so we can help you make sure we, you get to those goals. We have to make our own box to ship the plane in. So we are limited to a certain size, I think like 62 inches. So you could have like three foot by one foot by one foot. And then also working on the uh, strength test. So building some saw horses. It would be easier if you guys could all see my computer, but it's okay. So this is our little like chart. So we're gonna be working a lot with structures. We're gonna need a lot of communication with them. We have materials advisors. That's you two as well as Paulina because you're all going to be a little bit more knowledgeable than the rest of us undergrads. The trade studies are gonna be kind of based off of the project group and the project that you are assigned to. So that we kind of go into the design cycle with something that we can really work from. That's kind of been something we've had trouble with in the past, as many returning members probably remember. Some of the trade studies weren't necessarily relevant, so we're trying to change that. Ideally, we want to stay up in the air for 10 minutes unless we can find a conclusion where we can get a ridiculously high number of laps. And then range is the other characterization is the distance a plane can travel. Equations for this are typically formulated in max endurance and max range, which you need to be careful with since typically you're optimizing one or the other and you typically don't get to pick both. I'm gonna put people into groups based off of like this this topic, I guess. So, um, like Jake, Ken, Lily, Kenneth, you guys are all in the like arrow realm. Yeah. <laughs> um, Fiona, Alex, manufacturing. Um, oh, not even Alex, just Alex. <laughs> um, <laughs> Then like payloads, we also need some stuff from you. So like, do you want to join them? Caitlin. Payloads um, separate from manufacturing? Or yes. Yeah, separate okay. from manufacturing, yeah. There's um, nothing that structures need specifically? Not, not really. Um, because I mean, if you're designing a structural design by this point already, like, well, we just that's, that's detail design, so we're looking yeah. for okay. preliminary design, really. Also, um, I think for the proposal, we're going to push the full carbon fiber skin. Everything. Yes, we are. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Electronics <laughs> pack. Oh, it doesn't have to be universal. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, but I immediately understand what you're saying. I mean, well, unless we cut like mini strips of unidirectional in the opposite direction. Yeah. Like, is the also to the, the wing is down like this? Uh, yeah, you might not meet your tolerance. Like, we've done this in the past. Um, I, so, one thing, the pro is we know how it works. Uh, the sensitivity analysis, I think you guys might remember us talking a little bit about this. If we end up dropping down in mission three lap time, that's going to cost us a lot in our score. So it makes sense to try and optimize that one to be higher, stuff like that. We learned that like mission two lap time is going to be really critical. So then we're showing that we're designing our plane to be really fast so we can complete that. And then the laser head is going to move back and forth in this axis. And then this whole piece is also going to move back and forth to actually do the cutting itself. So you've got really high speed and low power. It's not really going to cut that much. If you've got really high speed and higher power, it's going to cut a little bit more. If you've got really high power and low speed, it's going to cut really deep. So right above the 3D printers, uh, you can do, this is set up to really just cut 2D shapes, but uh, you can set it up to cut in, like, you can have a rotation axis and all that kind of stuff and cut, like, uh, columns for, like, a building. Obviously not a building in this case, but... So, after we completed our trace studies, we then embarked on a mission to uh, find the pros and the cons of our initial designs. And that's where the trade studies came in, which was a huge help in limiting uh, what our options were. After that, we came into our first tub team meeting and we heard back from a multitude of our teams, one of which being the propulsions team, which was a great influ influencer in deciding our configuration. For example, they decided that instead of a uh, twin motor, they would give us a single motor. So for that, for us, that eliminated the use of a T-tail and the twin boom configuration. Afterwards, we were on our way and Kenneth gave us and uh, fixed variables of what we were dealing with. Basically look at what variables we could change and what could benefit the aircraft. And so that's what we were doing right now. Currently, we are figuring out coefficients, wing sizes. 
so for me I'm in the tail team uh, sizing of the actual horizontal tail in the future we are probably sure that more things will change and once that happens we might scrap our configuration altogether and come up with something that's even better and it's not just that one person decides the whole thing of the project it's a multitude of individuals that collaborate and influence others and what's going to come out of this is one pretty badass plane to be honest it looks like they're doing a new thrust calculation using a new uh, data point, yeah. So how much has that screwed things? Oh, it actually has. Okay. Uh, I don't have the data from them yet, but they're working on it. Yeah, I just want to see it. Okay. So let's see how yeah. I set So basically that they're, they're enhancing the thrust. He mean that static thrust, he says, when it has to be zero, and that data is very accurate. That's all he said. Okay, so I can just pull that. Yeah. But it's not on here, on the table. Yeah. So we should re rely almost entirely on pressure drag. Well, pressure shape. I mean, sh I think shape's only going to get you so far. Otherwise, you're just going to be bigger areas. And I want, ideally, I'm just looking something to slap onto the wing. It's a lot of flaps I know get you a small bonus. So I'll have to give you a small bonus. So it's somewhere here, but that's for. Okay, uh, chapter 12. Right. It's like su supersonic flight. Oh. No, no, like the data here is for supersonic flight. So I'm not sure. About that. All right, I'm Jack. I'm the performance lead for avionics and propulsion. Recently, as a team, we've been looking at a lot of data to determine what the best configuration is for our engines. Um, if you come over here, one of the things we've been looking at is motor data. So this is manufacturing uh, data sheets. What we can do is we can find a power value that sits close to what we expect for emission. And from there, we can glean an RPM value for what the motor will be running at then. From there, we can calculate an advanced ratio here. This is a prop data sheet from APC Props. Using that advanced ratio, we can determine what kind of thrust we're going to be looking at. And so that as a whole allows us kind of to determine what's the best configuration that we're going to be looking at for our aircraft. Ow! That is hard. I started to check how hard it is. <laughs> did they send you these samples or did you do these samples? Exactly. What? I did the layup. They sent this. This is the one that the they sent me. These that are good. Oh, never mind. Not any. The ones that are not laid up yet are the free 45. ones. Hmm. This is the 80, the 80 or 45 degree angle is like perfect. This one this is also. Like, unplug it in. Got some compression. Yeah, these are all single layer. Yeah. yeah. Where's the 80 GSM? And we do have the thinner foam, uh, so it actually means we're yeah, that's ETS foam. That makes damage kind of bad. Like show and tell. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly why I was like, you should bring it over. <laughs> a lot of people that are just like, what do we do now? And since we don't have like the exact dimensions and that kind of thing, there's not a whole lot that can be done. So I would think it would be kind of nice if at some point soon, we could just get a working document, kind of like the spreadsheet we had last year with the dimensions. Yeah. Um, I think you'll, your team members will get hit by a truck like <laughs> after aero configuration. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, the more they know about structural design, even making like, let's cat a spar together and let's run like some yeah. rudimentary like hand calcs on this even. Uh, getting just those things done, I think, can benefit people greatly to like be able to structurally design because right now they only are trade study. Twin Tunnel is now scheduled for November 15th to 18th, two weeks away. Um, we got to get a model built and Jake you need to figure out whatever you need to do to get the thrust stuff up working mm -hmm. and for that we're going to need props. The only question mark in my head is <laughs> two PVC pipes. I'm trying to avoid that right now personally. You want to try it? I don't, yeah. Well, we should see what Ted comes up with. Well, uh, but the thing is, the advantage of the two PVC pipes is that fixes basically, well, oh, it's, it's actually, the, it exacerates the pitching problem, so. I'm trying to send people off to work with different sub-teams, so I know uh, their fuselage lead is basically yep. reaching out to Yeah, and I've been having Man act as our go-between yeah, between pretty involved in P first. And for some stuff, it's just, it feels like we're kind of boxed into certain designs because mm. we have very little flexibility for Having a middle spar that was also made of carbon, and they would just be different, be a variable layers, carbon, middle spar. My only concern there would it needs to be really smooth if you're going to slide stuff on and off. Yeah, just sand it. We need sand Water sand it. Yeah. So in the future, I want to actually do like training rather than just introductions. Mm -hmm. um, that'd probably be in the next couple of weeks. Um, there was a decent amount of people that showed up. I think there were like eight people that came, which is pretty good. 
um, several familiar faces that have been coming to more of these things than others, so that's right. also a good thing to realize. But anyway, it's you now. Okay, so I just have a meeting today, and it's on track, and everybody's doing their work. Um, basically, we right now set the compare diameter and pitch. It is either 16, 12, or 17 by 10. And we are still planning on using our motors, but Prana Bank can brought up the idea that we can ask a, I can ask a team motor to customize the motor for us. And that might be a more optimal option, potentially. Starting to do some CAD work and label drawings, so getting more finalized designs. Um, the shipping box and the test stand are especially uh, looking good right now. The Mission 2 stuff, uh, we're kind of waiting on structures to figure out like where we can mount it. Keeping that in mind, I think most preliminary things are like by and large completing, except Fiona, your analysis for materials is going to go on a little longer. Um, and we actually like select by the time structural design folks are a little midway through their design. I've been trying to stress that for like the general members that they need to be like, recording everything they do so that way they can have something to contribute to the proposal. Yeah. Then we should have a lot by then hopefully to like present at the PDR. <laughs> is the PDR going to happen like that Monday or like what is the plan for that? Yeah. I was thinking the Monday. Um, this Monday after Thanksgiving. Is that a really good plan? <laughs> Also, so we'll hard Monday schedule. Well, Monday would just be doing this meeting. Yeah. Like, it wouldn't okay. The alternative option is general meeting. Because we have probably one members there. 